Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 99 of our SpaceX Weekly Updates. We have a lot to cover this week, so let's dig in. Inside Mega Bay 1, the third section of Booster 13's methane tank was stacked. The next section to be stacked will be the last part of the methane tank. Workers continued raising formwork for a new extension of the concrete berm wall to protect the new cryo tanks from the force of super heavy engines. Welded steel columns continue to be added to strengthen the vertical storage tanks. The outer shells around the tanks really took a beating during the previous Starship launches, driving SpaceX to add bracing to the remaining tanks' shells. The new concrete structure next to the deluge tanks failed during construction. When concrete isn't given enough time to cure or formwork isn't adequately braced, the cement can overload the forms, spilling out and running the pour. In this case, the entire structure will have to be torn down and rebuilt. SpaceX's LR-11000 has been operating at the launch site non-stop for over two years now, and workers continue to slowly dismantle the crane. It's still not clear if this is just extra thorough maintenance and repair work, or if SpaceX has other plans for this crane. A length of heavy current three-phase cable running through the orbital tank farm was pulled into place by a team of workers. This may be an additional power supply to the methane pumps. Using a telehandler, protective steel plating is being placed over the concrete base of the launch tower to protect it from hot exhaust and debris kicked out by Super Heavy's Raptor engines. The concrete is marked off with paint and holes are being drilled into the surface to hold the frames that anchor the steel plates. The Star Factory expansion continues to make progress this week with the next column row towards where Tent 3 once stood structurally completed. The new storage yard is being fenced in, and a staging area has been prepared for steel deliveries. Teardown of the failed concrete pour continued through the afternoon. While some of the work might be salvageable, most of the existing work will need to be removed and redone. That night, over at the orbital tank farm, the eighth column was being put in place, with six columns on the first tank and two on the second. Installation of horizontal pieces began on Saturday morning, further strengthening the tanks against external loads. Going one column at a time, installation of the horizontal members proceeded from top to bottom before crews moved on to the next batch. Installation of the third column on the most dented tank began on Sunday morning, with the fourth following just a few hours later, with crews working quickly to improve the tank farm for Flight 3. To fix the dents in the tank, a pulling fixture was welded to the shell and attached to the adjacent columns. A larger piece of steel angle bracket was welded to the shell for the deeper dent and likewise affixed to a column. Over at the build site, a counterweight tray that was used for a bridge crane testing was removed from Mega Bay 1. With testing complete, the counterweight tray and Versa bar were removed from the build site for storage. Back at the OTF vertical tanks, workers seemed to reconsider the dent puller and removed it from the tank shell. Instead of the puller, two lifting slings were attached to the angle brackets on the tank shell and brought down to the ground. Passing midnight into Monday morning, workers began to pull on the slings, likely with a telehandler, gradually working as much of the dent out of the tank shell as they could. Significant progress had been made on the water tank exoskeleton by morning. A second pair of eyelets was in place on the deeper section of the dents as work continued to reshape the damaged structure for reinforcement. Most of the bottom row of the launch tower was plated at ground level by the afternoon with detail work yet to begin. Insulation was spotted being added around the recently installed replacement small water tank. Near Highway 4, the trench in front of the methane tank has continued to grow over the last week. The purpose of this trench is still yet unknown. While most of the launch complex infrastructure is dedicated to keeping things cold, sometimes cold things need to be warmed up. To that end, new vaporizers were delivered to the launch complex. By Monday, after days of appearing to struggle with it, workers finally removed most of the boom of SpaceX's LR-11000 crane. Most of the boom remained in one piece and was just disconnected from the final section and the boom foot. 
Meanwhile, crews continued their work to demolish the botched concrete structure, and in relatively short order, the work was mostly completed. Back at the build site, trucks were placing additional concrete near Highway 4 for the ongoing phase of the Star Factory expansion. The trucks finished the work early in the afternoon. A support frame with the two cradles at the top was spotted outside Sanchez. This will serve as a support and transport stand for the two-point ship lifter while it's not in use. Large pipe manifolds were delivered to the launch site on Tuesday, building out additional systems for the tank farm. Making use of additional eyelets welded onto the water tank shell, more of the large dent was pulled out. The legs for one of the launch tower prefabrication jigs, used to assemble the tower segments prior to stacking, were spotted being moved into place at Sanchez as work begins for a second tower at the launch complex. New loads of columns, beams, and manufacturing equipment continue to arrive at the build site for the Star Factory expansion as the new construction builds out from the nose cone assembly hall. Starship 26's stringers are being connected together with covering pieces to provide continuous reinforcement along the unpressurized barrel section. The lowermost bar of Mega Bay 1's outer door was raised for the first time, climbing near to the top of the doorway as designed. After a short stay, Booster 12 departed the rocket garden, rolling out towards Highway 4 to await final preparations for it to enter the highway. Four hours later, the booster entered Highway 4 and re-entered the build site at the ring yard. Rolling past the construction fencing, Booster 12 re-entered Mega Bay 1. Once inside, the booster was connected to the bridge crane by Wednesday morning. It was then lifted off the booster thrust simulator stand for placement on one of the bay's work tables for engine installation. With its work with Booster 12 complete, the Booster Thrust Simulator departed Mega Bay 1 and headed back along Highway 4 to the Sanchez site and later the Rocket Garden. Overnight, columns began to rise near Highway 4 in front of the Nose Cone Assembly Hall. This section does not have provisioning for bridge cranes and may serve as a staging area for holding and finishing ship sections. Two precast concrete pieces were brought to the orbital tank farm in the morning, which are replacing the old HESCO barrier with a concrete blast wall. Back at the build site, an empty ship transport stand was brought to the high bay on a configured pair of counterweighted SPMTs. Additional sections of precast concrete were delivered to the launch complex throughout the day. Taking a closer look at the precast segments of the blast wall, multiple pieces of rebar can be seen for setting the wall in place. Once at the site, workers wasted no time lifting the new blast wall segments and putting them into position at the launch complex. Continuing the dent removal process, a bracket was welded in place for the dent puller. The adjusted chain was then used to pull the shell into the column where it was welded in place. Mega Bay 1's new door truss was holding steady at mid-level, giving a good look at the door structure. The door elements are held parallel on runners and suspended on cables. With demolition complete, reconstruction of the failed concrete building has begun with the erection of the new rebar and formwork well underway. Installation of the shield plates and their associated frames on the orbital launch integration tower base has reached the second level. The non-standard panel shapes will likely be done last. Behind the blast wall at the orbital tank farm, the new plumbing manifolds for the propellant farm are being put in place. It appears that this piping will either capture or at least redirect the nitrogen boil off from the liquid oxygen subcoolers. Outside near Highway 4, smaller diameter lines were being run for the propellant farm. Operating on tight schedules, steel for the new Star Factory expansion continues to arrive just in time for placement. A column section for the second orbital launch integration tower was spotted being moved at Sanchez, where crews are beginning prefabrication work. Barely visible through the mist, Starship 28 was disconnected from the two-point lifter in the high bay. The extension of the Star Factory assembly hall towards Highway 4 has begun to take shape. Every other column will only be supporting the exterior facade. The nose cone hall also began to grow towards the existing building's open wall. 
Ship 28 was moved to the doorway of the high bay, making use of the self-propelled modular transporter and Stan brought in earlier for repositioning. Later in the evening, the ship was pulled out completely, giving us a good look at the repaired heat shield as the starship was rolled into the lot next to the high bay. After putting the ship down, the self-propelled modular transporters were rolled out and reoriented before going back under the ship's stand. The ship was rolled back into high bay after that, entering the facility shortly after midnight on Thursday. With the booster resting on a work stand, the load spreader was detached from booster 12 and lowered to the ground. As the sun rose over Starbase, concrete was placed for the new blast wall around the horizontal orbital tank farm storage tanks. The fourth and final section of Booster 13's methane tank was moved into Mega Bay 1 ahead of installation. With all other jib and boom components removed from SpaceX's LR-11000, the A-frame was removed from the crane. One of the steel connection plates for the new orbital launch tower was spotted being moved at Sanchez as SpaceX continues to prepare to assemble these upper sections of the structure. Over at the launch complex, the booster quick disconnect was run through a low speed closure. Back in Mega Bay 1, the final section of booster 13 CH4 tank was stacked, leaving just the joining of the two tanks left for stacking operations. Meanwhile, workers continue to tune the door mechanisms, slowly adjusting the positions of the door element from the top of a lift. Progress continued to be made on the rebuild of the formwork behind the water deluge system. The forms have been thoroughly braced to prevent any chance of another blowout. Workers began to repaint the orbital launch mount, signaling that the preparations for integrated flight test three are entering the home stretch. The new water tank for the launch system's bunker has been fully insulated and protective cladding is in place over most of the supply and drain lines. This week at the Cape, Falcon 9 Booster 1073 was fully stowed by Friday at the docks and was laid onto the horizontal transporter for its trip to Roberts Road. SpaceX support ship Bob returned to Port Canaveral from Detian's shipyard on Monday, refreshed to support future missions. At Launch Complex 39B, installation of the crew emergency egress basket began this week. In the event of an emergency during the launch countdown, the baskets will transport the crew from the launch tower to the base of the pad, where emergency vehicles will be waiting to transport them away from the launch complex. Inside the port waters, crews were doing Dragon capsule recovery training, practicing how to recover crew and cargo from the spacecraft. Crawler Transporter 2 was moved from the park site over to the nearby vehicle assembly building on Thursday. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.